Welcome back to Cricket for Americans. Nick here. Gabe, the Night Watchman. And Gabe, we are here for another episode of Cricket Rick Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> and I, I'm so excited because for today for Cricket Tuesday, we're looking at another uh, bowling instructional video, bowling masterclass. The actual top, the title is Glenn McGraw Fast Cricket Fast Bowling Masterclass. And we, we watched a great one by Shane Warren. Here's another Australian um, cricketer going to give us some other information on fast bowling, which is fantastic. I'm excited about that. But I'm really excited about this news I just got. My man Piyush um, on, on YouTube. And I had to double check it for myself. Do you remember when we talked about, you know, a possibility of Indian captains? And we had said that we did, at least I didn't want the same captain for all formats, which is what they're doing right now. But the Indian right. Cricket Board promises to look at uh, other captains. So Royal's not doing the whole thing. Do you remember right. what name I said and I got crushed for? Who I think should uh, be considered as a, as a captain? Use, who did you... It wasn't. Did you mention Pat? I can't remember, man. No. Or maybe no. that's who, who I was I calling. Oh, no, you right said a bowler. You said Boomer. You said you wanted a bowler. Boomer. You said Can you no. predict who is the no. vice captain in the Sri Lanka series for the test and the T20 side? Oh, little Boomer, baby. Boom, baby. Ah. How dare you doubt me? Not just you, Gabe. You're fine. But the whole audience. I'm going on a tirade right now. You doubted me. You did not think that I knew what was going on. I said, you got to have a fast bowler with the kind of, you know, machismo that a boomer has and the experience. And lo and behold, lo and behold, the, you know, the BCCI, you know, they gave me a call. They gave me a call. They said, give us your five reasons why. I gave my five reasons why. And look who's the vice captain right now. I'm just saying. It's a good day to be a fast bowler. And you know, it's me. crazy. When Australia made Patty Cummings the captain – People, a lot of people were like, oh, you know, bowling captains don't normally work out too well because they'll over bowl well. themselves or they might under bowl themselves. Here's the reality, okay? Ultimately, you got to have a good, a, 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 a good uh, head on your shoulders. The most important thing about being a captain is being able to lead and lead by example. And the one yep. thing you've never seen Boomer go out there and do is fold, cousin. That dude got heart. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's the most important thing. When people got to look in your eyes, they got to believe, yeah, I believe we can still win this game. All right? There's other players, they shall remain nameless, who when you look at them, you're like, yeah, <laughs> can they lead other men? That's just being real. You know what I mean? And it's wow. not everybody's supposed to lead. I get that. You right. know what I'm saying? Personalities are different. But I'm going to lead you if I believe in you. But if I don't believe in you, I'm not following you down that rabbit hole, cousin. And I think teams struggle with that. And a Patty Cummings, perfect example. Now, to be fair, he's got a good team. The team is together now. But as soon as he became captain, it's changed. And you can see from the ashes, the, the it shellacking. It makes a huge difference, yes. It makes a huge difference. And you did it. Because I was like, I know we've been calling for Pant for a while. So I thought it was going to be Pant. And I was like, no. Because honestly, Pant's a good player. And he is. And we were right about that. He was going to replace Doni. And we said this, bro, two, three years ago. When we first got into cricket, I believe you're crazy. Look at Pant now. Finisher, yes. Wicket keeper, yes. Like so, obviously he's the guy that replaced in, uh, Doni as the uh, the wicket keeper on India uh, um uh, on uh, India's international team. Now, does he have captain pedigree? I don't know, cause then everybody's gonna be taking those Pantonian <laughs> shots. You know what I mean? Like this, he plays with a certain aggressiveness. So I don't know if he can lead. The rest of the team. He has to be left alone to his own devices to do what he's got to do. But Boomer, Oh, I like it. Oh, I like Ooh, it. My I, man was all, all I'm saying. All I'm saying. Thank you. Where, where's my parade at? <laughs> I, I, I was reading the comments. And they're like, are you crazy? That's the stupidest thing we ever heard of in an entire life. Uh, obviously not. Now, I get it. It's vice captain, not captain. But you can't tell me that's not an audition. So, I'm excited about Can that. One question. Can Absolutely. I ask you one question? One question. Do you think this means the K.O. Raul experiment is done? Because we've had this conversation. Bro, K.O. Raul no. was vice captain, and not only did his performance struggle, because he went in South Africa. Yeah, remember captain. this? Captain, yeah. Uh, uh, they, yeah, they made him captain. He went in South Africa from having one of the all-time performances, right? I mean, him and Agarwal, just, that, that was amazing. Next game, Coley's out, so they promote him to captain, and he struggled both performance-wise, 
bowling. He forgot the ball. Uh, 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 who was it? Like, why do you got it? He's an all rounder. Like, he Vinky. literally forgot. Vinky, yeah, Vicky Dish Iron. Like, you could tell Kale Raul was not ready. And people said, if he can't lead the 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 Punjab Kings, Easy. you think he's gonna lead India? So, do you think this is done for him? Is he? Do I don't think it's done, but I do think, from what I'm hearing, it's uh, people are not very happy with KRL because of what happened. Um, I said it myself in our video after that series. That's why he's in the record it. books right now, in the kind of records you don't want to have your name next to. I don't think he's completely done. I think his name is still in the hat, so to speak. But I think you know it's better for all parties concerned to kind of move in a different direction, <laughs> right? <laughs> And then, and then you can bring it back. Listen, we still haven't had, as far as the Indian team goes, a side of Prithvi Shaw. And he had like a one chance in Australia. And even we were crushing him, right? I feel yeah. bad for that because they do listen to us way too much. He hasn't even had a sniff. He can't even go like, like say hi to his friends when they're on the Indian side if he's in the same town. He can't get from that buffet table. He can't. Yeah, exactly. Um, excuse me. Do you have ID, sir? So, I mean... It, we'll have to see, but we're going to check out this video here. We don't want to take anything away from Glimmer Bra. This guy is all class, all world class. Any Hall of Fame you want to create, you put Glimmer Bra in that Hall of Fame because this guy is absolutely unbelievable. And if you want to learn the best, you got to learn from the best. So, you ready for this one, Mr. Gabe? So called so Australia fan. So excited because you know I'm an Aussie fan, cousin, and he's an all time great uh, 500 plus test wickets, like 560. You know, McGraw's had some great performances, and I think that Tough you know nail, people confuse too. it. He was a he was a right hand pacer, but he was more of a medium pacer. So it wasn't just pure fire that came out of that cannon for an arm he had, but he also had some uh, um what do you call it uh, uh uh craftiness to him, right? One of the knocks on a guy like, for instance, uh. Patty Cummings is oh well, you know it's just raw pat pace, and you know Patty, Patty Cummings. Suffered a lot early on in his career, Nick, Nick, from injuries or whatever, back injuries or whatever. But does he have that craftiness that once he starts losing pace, he can still take wickets? All right. I would argue he does. Look at a guy like Jimmy Anderson. Jimmy Anderson's pace is and he's still taking wickets. So McGraw was more of a medium pacer and still got 560 or 570 text wickets, cousin. You know what I mean? So I'm so excited. Oh, and, and he the was, he was all of he's Mr. Lion Length, right? He's Mr. Lion Length. He knows exactly where he's going and he's going to hit that mark every single time. Oh, man. I, I'm so excited, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's do this. All right. Let's check this out in three, two, one. Batman thing going on there. Glenn McGrath's hat trick at the Wacker in 2000 against the West Indians, 563. <laughs> it would be against the West Indians. For Glenn, and he's with us today for our bowling masterclass. Good to see you. Looking fit. That's really I wouldn't good. go that far. I think it's uh, this will be the first time I bowled in two years. So we'll see how we go. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you've had a few looseners. You're I'm sure, he's so got it. Ready to go. Let's begin right at the beginning because the first time we saw you, you were a, a skinny fella. You, you, you ran in a little straighter than. Than you do you you do now. Look look at that old uh, footage. Yeah. Has much changed in your bowling action since those early days? I think I've put on a bit of weight. Nice. Uh, the, I think it's uh, the action's not as arms and legs everywhere. It's uh, it's a lot more controlled and through the crease. But uh, in this footage here, that's in the he way is a lanky guy. Right. Jeez. So, when, uh, when you say the action's controlled, what do you mean by that? Do, do, do you mean that you you found a more mechanical method? That was therefore repetitive. Oh, that was well, a beautiful one. That, last ball, that, that was back in '95, so it's not too much difference there. You know, I think uh, always had a fairly smooth run up. I tried to sort of go straight through the crease, good straight lines, and then straight through uh, towards the batsman. So there wasn't any falling away. There wasn't any wasting of, of speed by going in the wrong direction. In those early days, you didn't have that little duck in to get closer to the stump. So you used to run through in a straighter line. Did you change that on purpose? I didn't change it on purpose. I try to get nice and close to the stump, so you know, brings LBW and, and sort of get that ball, sort of the batsman thinking they had to play it the whole time. I think that little jump in was uh, something that uh, that just came over time. I tried not to do it too much. Man, with like that huge wingspan, that's just going almost straight so down sometimes. Up here, and, and it's very easy to see how level your eyes are. It's as if you were determined to have a, a still head above all else. 
Yeah, I guess if, if you've got a still head, everything else is controlled. I didn't look at his spot on the wicket. When <laughs> LBW was City. Deal, and the stiller I kept my head, uh, the stiller keep your eyes, the sort of uh, better perception you had. So even though you were going to hit the top of off stump, you didn't look at it? No. No, it was just at the top of my mark, already locked in the ball I wanted to bowl. If it's hit the deck top of off, Yorker, slower ball bounce or whatever, it's locked in. As soon as I start running, I switch everything off. I just used to sing a song to myself in my head just to switch off that little voice and and help you relax so that's okay. uh, that's what that's i did awesome. all right let's see you back at the end of your run because you didn't bowl many no balls so you already had good control of your run up let, 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 you you were 17 meters back is that right it was uh, I'd, I'd go back 17 meters pace make it a mark out. pace it out first. and then 23.3 uh, was uh, was the length of my my run up my whole career so it's a bit rough walking it out He's doing it in front of like a whole crowd too. That's crazy. Yeah. So you have a point. You have a point from which you know. have to take off from every ball you bowl. Sorry. You have a point from which you have to take off from every ball, ball yeah. you bowl. The grounds crew like, what are you doing in my yeah, grass? So basically, you've got the line there. You just walk in, toe the line, slightly build up, and then run in. <laughs> Got the mitt. Okay, there's a couple, of things, a couple of things I picked up there. One is the position of your wrist. You, you have your wrist in quite a cock position. Yeah, my wrist, I was a little bit different to swing bowlers. My wrist was really, really behind the ball and come over the top, whereas a lot of swing bowlers come down. I sort of come over the top, hit the deck, and apparently I used to get a lot more revolutions on the ball than, than a swing bowler, which you know, I didn't realise. But more bounce, more seed movement. Good follow through, Pitch. Bonus one more. <laughs> um, uh, just, uh, I think one ball's all you can yeah, manage. I, by I the sound think of that it. should nearly do it. So when you're at the end of your <laughs> this run, guy. you're settling to bowl to the batsman. What are you thinking about? What are you thinking about at the end of your run? What am I thinking back? So when I bowl, walk back to the top of my mark, analyse the ball I've just bowled, work out what ball I want to bowl next, and then just switch off, get the song in my head, relax, run in and bowl. I wonder what that song What's the is. Song? Mm. <laughs> oh! Middle stump, baby! He said that the celebration, too. I love it. <laughs> oh, I don't remember the cool. noble. All right, just spend a minute for us on the follow through. <laughs> don't mind the I noble. It's a very full follow through. It's like you're making a conscious effort to complete your action. Jeez. Yeah, a lot of people think you get the pace from from the shoulder it has to go from here I always felt the quicker you get through the crease so where you get your pace from and you and I felt my bounce was from the top of the action down through here and you power through the crease that's why your run up goes your follow through continues on and slows down when it's ready and you try to follow through towards the target well you try to follow through and get as close to the batsman as can say yeah. so, see how he's going then turn around and come back <laughs> okay and uh, i like the fact you use this left arm <laughs> i love it as well sledging power from here and from the top of your mark down through here and drive through with the hip that's where the power comes from not from sort of from this from this shoulder okay. good uh, we'll take a short break more when we come back He gets really close to that crease. Like really close. Hey, welcome back. I'm at the end of Glenn McGrath's run up and, and I want to know what's going through your head. You you were known as somebody who was almost surgical in, in, in the way that you could destruct a, a batting order. What's going through your head? How are you looking to get people out? Well, I'm only looking to get a batsman out one of three ways. Either bold, LBW or court from keeper through to gully. So that's why I've got all my catchers in there. I bowl with a, you know, a, a you know, a 7 2 field or even an 8 1 sometimes because that's where I'm trying to get the wickets. So, uh, so that's why I hit the deck top of off. Jeez. Hopefully, the ball just holding its line going away or occasionally coming back in off the wicket. So, as you're running into bowl, are you serious that you've got a song going in your head? You're yep. trying to relax yourself? Yeah, because the worst thing is a little voice in your head. Sometimes, when you're not bowling well, you're thinking about your front arm, your follow through. You can't think about that in a match. You work on that in the nets. In the game, just think about bowling and what you want the ball to do Thing and switch everything else off. That's why that's yeah. song in the head. And with Such variations, you've got all sorts Such of different balls in your package. How do you grip the ball for those different balls? And do you change that grip as you run in to confuse the batsman? 
No, not really. You know, I just fingers behind the seam, thumb on the bottom, sort of cocked running in, and that was it. Just relax, stand tall, hit the deck. Let's go. Pretty simple stuff. Let's see. So, clear head. The song is singing. Now, get some of that shine, baby. Ooh. Oh! Ooh. Just missed. What about yeah. the variations? Let, 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 let's just have a look at some pictures of, of the different deliveries that you could bowl. Firstly, the Yorker that you got better and better at the more oh, you played. Yes. Yeah. It's, uh, that was oh, early game again. Wow, that's all right. Oh, man, what are you going to do with that? Dies, bro. Rather than bowl too quick. Bouncer again, get the feel, hit the deck, Good stand catch. tall. That one didn't get up. No, that was the bouncer that Sachin Tendulkar was LBW yeah. to that didn't get up. Then we've got a cutter, <laughs> and we've also got a slower ball in there. You also bowled around the wicket. So how was your grip for the slower ball? Slow ball and slow that's ball. doing Bravo's specialty. It normally, let it slide out through the fingers there. The other one was off spinner where you yeah, take I your thumb off on that first one. He, such a high wingspan that he can just throw finger, that straight down. Sort of floats out Hit the, the deck, as he sort says. Of out the back of the hand, which sort of drops and hopefully gets a bit of extra bounce. So there's a bit of variation there. Any problem for you to bowl round the wicket? Did you change anything when you did? No, again, for me, it was a feel. So I knew where the umpire was, the stumps each end. I knew the ball I wanted to bowl. It was locked in and just relax and, and run in and bowl. That was as simple as I kept it. And when you say you had a song in your head, what was it mainly? Uh, never the same song, just whatever I listened to on the radio coming in or a song I liked at, the, <laughs> at that time. So uh, that, again, just helped me switch off that voice in the head, which occasionally got a bit negative. So the, the, it's, a, it's a crystal clear message here. You've got to bowl with a clear head. Yeah. Absolutely. And Nothing else going on. No traffic. No, and if uh, I never change my mind when I'm running in a bowl, and the odd occasion I did, it always went wrong. All right. <laughs> Man. Uh, you know, as the as the uh, bowler fan, I'm gonna let you go first, my friend. What are your thoughts? You know, first thing, as I'm listening to this video, you can tell why he's successful and why he got 563 wickets. Okay, everything is 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 meticulous, meticulously, I should say, prepared and examined, and he's a professional to the point where he knew exactly how many meters he wanted to be on his run up and where he wanted to actually take off from and, you know, uh, 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 talking about his hand position. One of the things um, I did when I was coaching and one of the things that I've always uh, believed in is, and it's, this goes for all you little league parents out there and cricketing parents out there that love to, you know, shout instructions at kids, you know, from the state, don't do that. Don't do that. That's not the time to work on things. Okay. You don't want to yeah. think about mechanics. You don't want to think about you just go. You just go. It is what it is. It is what it is. That that's all you do. You go. You play. It's got to be natural. You can't think about is my arm am I, in baseball. Is my elbow up? Am I following through? And that's why the oldest adage is you practice the way you play. That's why you play. That's why you practice hard. Because when you want to get in there, you want to just be able to do it without even thinking about it. Another thing is that you saw him talking about his follow through. There's not enough bowlers that actually uh, follow through well enough. And one of the things that uh, there's a video by Tim Lincecum, I remember, you can actually create miles per hour in baseball, right? You can create velocity by simply following through. And that's what he was talking about, right? Not cutting yourself off at your delivery. And one of the things Tim Lincecum's dad had him do, and then later on when I was coaching, I had my kids do, is... Uh, well, his dad would put a dollar on the floor. So on his face, uh, on his windup, he would go and follow all the way through. And if you could pick up the dollar cleanly, then it's yeah. yours. If you can't, you couldn't, you didn't follow through correctly. Now we try to teach kids to do that with towels. Basically, you got to snap, snap that towel and make sure you following through. If they don't follow through, the towel won't slap, snap correctly. But the idea is to tell them or teach them to do that and that's where the back injuries come in because you've got to extend that back you've got to bend down you got to keep that velocity or that momentum going at the same time you saw the still head right always locked in on your target so even though your body's doing everything your arms and legs could do whatever they want to do your head can't move same thing in batting right you see batters up there doing whatever they're doing your head's got to be on that target okay because if it's not for a split second you miss it so you could tell he was more than just pace and why he was so good because he knew 
that it took more than just more than more than just pace to take wickets. And man, I I wish more and more young bowlers today really uh uh, uh practice as much and you see this all the time, right? A bowler and you're like, "What is going on? What are you thinking?" And they'll say, "Well, in an interview, I can't believe they said this. Well, I didn't know what to throw at that moment or whatever, and I just changed my mind mid run up. No, after every ball I deliver, I should already know the way you attack that ball, what I'm going to do next. Not mid way delivery. Wait, am I going to go with the Yorker? Am I going to go? That's why the Yorker might turn into a full toss. You know what I mean? That's why you cannot change. You've got to go because, again, it's about the hand positioning on the ball, right? Whether he's going split finger. Look, my hands are so small. I can't even do the split finger the way he did it, he did it right? Uh, uh, you know, you want to choke it in baseball. That's for the change it for the slower ball, right? Get it really deep in your hand, loose off your fingers. And you don't want to change that stuff mid run up. And he was so co- consistent with it. And he said, every time on the off occasion that I did change my mind, it went terrible. So for all you young bowlers, commit. All right, go up there, you ball, you read the batter, and you commit. And, uh, uh, bro, man, McGraw, McGraw, if I say, say McGraw, McGraw, McGraw. Awesome. Uh, uh, you're right. It's is, all about, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was say, the last thing is the, the, the announcer was like, what is a specific song? Does it matter? The point is you're trying to get, you're trying to. I was wondering the same like, thing the whole time too. I'm matter? one of those idiots that I was so curious about that. And he, he seemed like he kept avoiding that question. And eventually he's like, oh, it was whatever song was at the time. But I was the same way. Like, what was the song? Like, I was dying to find out. You're absolutely right. That's the biggest takeaway I took from this was trust the process. You have coaches, you have training, you have your net session, you have your, your, your scouting report. You've got to believe in that process. And if you don't believe in the process, bring up the concerns before you go into the game. And I understand adjustments have to be made, but not on your own personal game, right? And I love the fact that he had said the times that I just, he he talked about reflection a lot. I analyze every ball before the next run up. Where did it go? This or that? What adjustments do I have to make? But when I'm running up, I know exactly what I'm doing. I got my grip running up, ready to go. And I'm all worried about just following that process. I love that because if you, even if the process is wrong, you're going to be more successful trusting in that process than trying to change it up on a dime. Oh no, I got some opposition. I got three sixes hitting me in a row. This is not working. I got to go back to the drawing board. Not when you're in the middle of your over, not when you're in the middle of your match. You got to trust what's going on. And like you said, Obviously, there's a few times where he did try to ditch the process, and he said it did not work out too well. More reflection. He adjusted to a point where, let me stick with what I'm doing, 563 test wickets later. One thing I thought was interesting, just read a little bit about him, he uh, he started both of his international debuts, um, short format and, and test, with ducks. This guy had a low um, batting average. He never got it too high. He got like around seven for test. But he had said in there, that he went to um, his friend, full-time photographer, who happened to play a little bit of cricket named Steve Waugh, okay? A little bit of cricket, just a small bit. He's more known for being a photographer, right? (laughs) But he went to him for some help, and he was able to get himself a 61 for his high score. So I thought that was really cool that he's not just focused. Because how many times do we hear, at least in baseball, all I care about is the pitching. I don't care about the batting. This guy was caring about the entire game. How can I contribute to my team? And... I love that he, in his mind, this is what makes you an all-time great. In his mind, oh, it was simple. You know, I had a few different variations. You know, I would just do the same thing. I would just do this. I would trust the process. Good things would happen. Well, good things would happen because you're an all-time great. He talked about having his whole idea with the catch was the wicket keeper to the gully. That was it. Let me get my seven guys in the slip there in the gully over there. That's okay because we're worried about the edges. He didn't focus at all about getting those wickets on caught you know, out there deeper out, which I'm sure he would take those when he got those. But I absolutely love that. Learned a whole lot. But again, like you said, it's the professionalism. It's trusting. And what's, And he said, if you're worried about your form, fix that in the nets, not in the middle of the game. That was really cool. You know, one of the things that uh, they teach us as teachers, and I think that this has been um, used in marketing, sales, and in sports, is KISS, right? Keep it simple, stupid. It's so Perfect. simple. Keep it simple. Don't make it too complicated. And I think sometimes in all sports, guys make things so complicated. Coaches make things so complicated. No, 
Know what you do. Keep and be consistent at it. Do it well. I hate when guys, and, and you just mentioned that, and I love that you mentioned that. I don't care what the batsman's doing. I know what I do. So I'm going to bowl to an 8-1 field or a 7-2 field, but I know I need my uh, 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 my, my gully in place. I need my slips in place because I'm looking for edges or I'm looking for LBWs. Or I'm going to clean bowl you out. If an occasion a ball drops, if I would have had somebody else out there or whatnot, I don't care. Because that would have just been pure luck. My plan is to take you, you know, to take your wicket either LBW bowling you out or uh, an edge. So I'm, I'm not playing your game. And I love that you mentioned that. Keep it simple. Stick to your strengths. So many coaches themselves like outthink themselves. Well, this is what this team does, or this is so. This is what I'm gonna do. No, you play to your strengths. Like, oh, you, you hit the nail on the head, Nick. Nick, you could be a coach. I, I hear England needs one. Silver was out. Oh man! Oh man! They they don't want that to happen because then it'll be success, and they'll be like, "Any idiot can now coach the England squad." Well, apparently so, baby. Now we would have to. The first thing I would do as the England cap coach is uh, tap into all the photographers in the area and see how many of them can play cricket. Oh, I I couldn't help myself. Two drive bys, baby. But uh, obviously, I know Steve Waugh was a, a legendary cricketer. I know that. Gabe knows that. But uh, let us know what you think about this video. Talk about, how can you not do an Australian video without some sledging? Come on, man. And I love that. How he said, he's like, he said, how he said that he got a little close to the batter just to see what's going on in his mind. I love the Australian approach. I love it so much. How can oh, you not absolutely, man. I, I, I'm a huge fan. And I tell you what, this guy's a legend, living legend. And I think that you see, I, I compare him more, by the way, to Josh Hazelwood than I do Patty Cummings, right? Because Patty Cummings does have that extra oomph. He's got that extra pace. But Josh Hazelwood is just like Gary McGraw. And, I mean, I get it, guys. He's young. Don't kill me. But he's very consistent. And he doesn't have incredible pace. But he's a medium pacer that is really consistent on his lines and lengths and has made him, and has made him successful. And if you stay, stick to your plan, like Nick said, and, and, and be consistent, you're going to be successful. Plus, both guys are trees, bro. What do they got in the water out there in Australia, Nick? This guy's 6'5". Six, five. Say, Hazelwood Pat Cummins six, is a five. tree, too. You know what I mean? You know, Josh Hazelwood, Josh Hazelwood, I wonder, I don't know. This is for all Australia fans that can get in the chat and let me know. I wonder if he doesn't always stick to his plan. Because when he's on, you can't touch this guy. I mean, you can't. Whether it's test, whether it's limited over format, you cannot touch this guy whatsoever. But we've seen when he's just giving up runs like it's Christmas for crying out loud. So I'm curious. He's more times than not fantastic. But we've seen – like this is Josh Hazel. What's going on? So I wonder what's going on there. But that's a different topic for another day. He is – that's a great comparison there. I just – when I see McGraw, I think of Pat Cummings. Not so much as delivery and so much as uh, the pace that they have. But a lot of similarities there, but that's a good call. Let us know what you think. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, that's six runs.